Okay. Good morning, everybody. Hey, I want to do something for the kids today and just give a short kids lesson. And today I'm going to be talking about hope. Now, the passage of scripture that I'm going to be looking at is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. But now, before uh, before I get into reading the scripture and talking about it, let me ask you: What are some things that you hope in? You've probably been staying at home a lot right now. You've probably been uh, watching a lot of TV or playing games. I hope you've been playing a lot of board games. I used to always love to play board games with my family. But whatever you're doing, I, I can imagine that you're beginning to hope for the day that you can go to the river or go outdoors or the day that you can go to a restaurant again. What do you hope in? In today's lesson, I, I like this lesson because we're going to talk about some things that I hope in. See, we're going to talk about two of my favorite things. We're going to talk about money and we're going to talk about food. Um, I'll bet those are two of your favorite things, too. Pretty much all the world likes those things. So, uh, money and food. Money and food. Now, why are those things important to me? Let me, let me tell you part of why. Um, money's important to me because I have a mortgage payment coming up. And I need to be able to make the mortgage payment, which means I need a fairly large amount of money in order to be able to make this mortgage payment. But you see, I have a friend who dropped by to help me out, and they gave me a big wad of money. Man, I've got to send this guy a thank you note, doesn't I? When people do nice things for you, do you send them thank you notes? Do you, do you tell them that you appreciate them and everything that you did for them? I mean, i really got to be grateful, because do you see what's on the cover of, of this big wad of money? Can you tell what that is? Let me just unpile the first one here for you. I don't know if you can see that. That's a hundred dollar bill. That's a hundred dollar bill. If this entire wad of money is all hundred dollar bills, I'm not just going to make a mortgage payment. I'm going to pay off my house. I got a great friend there. I don't just need to give him a thank you note. I need to take him to dinner or something. I need to be really, really happy, don't I? I put a lot of hope and I put a lot of trust in that friend that when I needed something, he gave me a big wad of money but I got a problem. I'm looking at this wad of money and the next bill isn't a hundred. Isn't another hundred. It's a twenty. Okay. Well, that's better than nothing. It's more than I had, right? It, it, it's a good thing. Now I'm up to $120. But let me tell you, $120 doesn't make the mortgage payment. Yet, if the rest of this is all twenties, That'll make a mortgage payment. So I hope that the rest of this is all 20s. But I got a problem. Can you see it right there on the cover? That next bill, that's a $1 bill. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So if the rest of this wad of money is $1 bills, I'm not going to be able to make a mortgage payment. In fact, I'm really in trouble because look at this. The next thing is just a piece of newspaper. In fact, all the rest of this is just newspaper. It looked like it was so much money. It's just newsprint. You know what that's an example of? That's an example of diminishing hope. The world is just like this. It promises you such big stuff. It promises you all kinds of money. Remember that $100 bill we started with? But as you peel off the layers, pretty soon you find out that what's inside of there is really just worthless. Absolutely worthless. So I guess if I'm going to pay my mortgage payment, I'm just going to have to get out there and earn the money myself and not count on my friend to pay it for me, which isn't such a bad thing. But when I put my friend, excuse me, when I put my hope in the thing that wasn't really going to fulfill, it's just like the world does. It promises big, and well, it promises a little bit less, and then pretty soon it's giving you nothing. Absolutely nothing. But maybe it'll work out better on the other side. See, I have another friend just like I had a mortgage payment that was due, I had another friend that knew it was lunchtime and brought me lunch. So he brought me out this lunch sack. You want to see how the lunch sack turns out? 
Well, let's see what I can find in here. First thing I see is a breath mint. All right, well, it's sweet. It's minty. It's better than nothing. It's better than I had a minute ago. But it's really not much of a lunch. In fact, it almost feels like a bad hint that I need to brush my teeth. But it's a start, right? Maybe instead of getting worse and worse and worse, it'll get better and better and better. Let's see what I pull out of here next. Oh, potato chips. Well, that's not bad for a second course of a lunch, is it? Hmm, I think I could eat potato chips. Salty, kind of nice to have around. Let's see what the third course in this is. Oh, a sandwich. Now, this is my kind of lunch. I shouldn't admit to this, but I tend to eat the same thing every day. I go home for lunch every day, and I make myself a sandwich. A little ham, a little cheese, a little mayo, and add a couple of bread and butter pickle slices. That is lunch. This will stave off my appetite. This will be a good lunch. I put a lot of hope in this friend. This friend is coming through. You want to see if there's anything else in there? Let's see. Oh, now we're talking. This, do you recognize what this is? This is an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> okay. So I've got two friends that came by to give me the things I need in order to get through my day. I had one that came by to help me with my mortgage payment, and he gave me this big bundle of bills and all the promises that went with it. It was pretty empty in the long run, right? That's diminishing hope. But the second friend brought me a lunch sack, and everything I pulled out of it was a little bit better than what was in it before. That's hope fulfilled. Uh, you know, we all go through life in a funny sort of a way. There's things that we hope for. Uh, but I'll tell you something. When you want something and you hope for something, but at the bottom of your heart you really don't think you're going to get it, a lack of hope equals a lack of action. Could you imagine what would have happened if I had not even tried opening my lunch set? If I had never opened it, I never would have had the chance to eat the food that was in it. I would have had to just go hungry. Well, a lack of hope equals a lack of action. Let me tell you something else about hope while I'm telling you about hope. Trusting the one who puts the package together is the key. Oh, I trusted both these guys. One was going to help me with a mortgage, and it sure looked like he did. A big bundle of money. But it wasn't real. So apparently he wasn't really trustworthy. And on the other side, someone that gave me a lunch sack, a meal, an entire meal, including dessert. Got to have that dessert in there. And every bit of that was in there, everything that I needed. So trusting the one who puts the package together is the key. When you're hoping for your future, know this. It's God that puts the package together. It's God that is in charge of the future. And you can trust him. He knows exactly how to put together all the right pieces for you so you can have hope, you can put your trust in Jesus, and you know that he's going to give you exactly what you need. I told you earlier that the verse for the day is Hebrews chapter 10, um, verse 23. Let me tell you what that verse says. It says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without one wavering. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Okay, what does that mean? Well, holding fast to something means that you're going to keep it strong and you're going to stick to it. When you're talking about holding fast to hope, you're saying that you're going to continue to believe that that hope is going to be a fulfilled hope. If you know the person who is giving you the promise is faithful, then you can hold fast to the promise. So our confession is a way of expressing our belief in Jesus Christ and our confession of Him as our Savior. So if we hold fast to the confession, it's the confession of our hope, then uh, we do that without wavering, then we're going to see the fulfillment of that because we know that Jesus, who holds our future, is faithful and He's going to give us the right things for our future. 
Sorry about that, I forgot to mute my phone before I started all of this, but whoever that is will probably not mind if I call them back in a little bit. Uh, as we get ready to wrap up, let me just voice a prayer for you guys as you stay home. Uh, I hope that you watch this, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you keep your hope sure in Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for the children that are watching this video, children of all ages, and I pray that you would give them a steadfast hope, an encouragement that, keep, that allows them to cling to you, to your faithfulness, to your promises, and Lord, as we trust that one day you're going to call us all back together again, help us to remember that day is coming, help us to trust in you who promises it to us. And Father, we continue to hope in you, not just for the day we're back together again, but the day that we're all together again in eternity, in your heaven, rejoicing with you forever thereafter. And give us uh, the faith, give us the strong eyes to look forward to that day where we will be with you eternally. Father, thank you for the children. Continue to bless them as they stay home. Make them patient. Make them not stir crazy. Help them to be obedient to their parents to continue to listen to everything it is that you're trying to teach them during this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys.